Okay, this is a video for Ghost Critics, tr The Trade Union, Mind Management, Mind Management, Volume 1. And as you can see here, I don't have the trade paperback of uh, Mind Management because I get the individual issues. Uh, it's up to, I think, 31 issues now, and I have all of them. And this is the first six issues that I think are in the first trade, and... As you can probably figure out by the fact that I have all the single issues, I like the series. Matter of fact, it's one of my favorites. So there's my, you know, there's there, there's the lead of my review. I really like Mind Management. It's one of my favorite books. Um, I haven't read these six since they came out in 2012. <laughs> but, I've, but I've read recaps of them. What is that? May 2012. But I've read recaps of them so many times in the issues that I know exactly what happens in these issues. Uh, so I figured I'd d dig them out and show them to you. I plan on reading the whole series uh, once it ends in five months, I think it is. Uh, I'll sit down and read it all at once. But I always tell myself that. And I've been buying so many new comics lately that... I haven't actually done that in ages because I, with so many new comics to buy, I've hardly ever reread anything in a while. But anyway, you know what's the first thing I noticed about these as I uh, pulled them out? Is how similar these covers are to the current Wicked and Divine series, which is also doing a whole series of headshots. At least the first six issues, because I'd, I'd forgotten this, because I don't think Mind mind Management has done a headshot like this in a while. You know, it's been a lot of issues. Um, but it was funny just to pull these out, and I went, wow, Wicked and the Divine. They're doing this same kind of thing now, except with a completely different style of drawing and coloring. But uh, Mind Management is uh, it's kind of a spy story. I like the uh, the art style is very, this is actual watercolor too, this isn't Photoshop watercolor since I've seen some of the originals of his. He actually uh, paints right over his inks with watercolor, it's got a, a sort of, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, folk art primitive style? I, uh, <laughs> but his storytelling is excellent, I mean that's what really makes this, it's not necessarily any individual drawing. Um, but his storytelling makes this spectacular. I mean, he really can tell a story with his pictures. And um, Mind Management, the story he's telling, it, it's funny to see these originally. This was originally supposed to be just a six-issue series that you see right here. And, but it, I guess it was received well, so they continued it on. And he had some more, because I think he said he originally had this one idea kind of for this one six issue series, but then they added, you know, at, there were so many questions opened up by, uh, I like that particular cover. Oh, look, there's a little woman's figure in her nose. Um, oh, and a dragon there. This oh Boy, this face is made up of all sorts of things. We got a woman and a tree and a dragon. I'm not sure what those eyes are. Um... But there's so many, you know, things opened up. This almost seems um, so simple compared to what the rest of the mind management story. The story has gotten so kind of big and sprawling and complex. Oh, there's a nice image. That these first six issues almost seem kind of naively simple now. Because th this story is about this woman right here, Maru who's a reporter searching for answers about a plane flight, a mysterious plane flight where everybody um, landed, had their memory taken away. And, you know, she discovers, leads her to this guy eventually who tells her the story of mind management. And mind management, including a talking dolphin, and mind, and mind management is this sort of spy organization where everybody has these weird superpowers that can do strange things and... Uh, you know, the U.S. had their mind management, the Soviets had their super-powered guys, and they went against each other and helped each other out and did all sorts of things. That was until they disbanded. And, you know, she's learning all this. And we're introduced to so many characters and weird powers and all sorts of stuff that in the next 
you know, 30 issues. They really go into even more and more, and you actually get all the questions these, you know, six issues raise actually get answered. I mean, that's, I, I have found so many stories, you know, the TV show Lost being the leader of them, where the plot was, what the heck is going on in this story, and they never answer that. This actually answers that. In this, you actually get answers to all the questions that it poses to you. Um, and what's interesting about the comics, too, is in the comics, unlike the trades, you get all these little extra things. I'm told these aren't in the trades, he says, because they want to make the, the monthly experience uh, rewarding and different than just reading it in trades. So they give you all these... This is all background information right here. See the story in the front? On mind management, they're little stories of the history of mind management that aren't in the trade paperbacks. I think he's doing the same thing with uh, his current series. What was that one I just... Pastaways. He's doing the same thing. He's adding extra stuff into the monthly issues that won't be in the trade. And it's just flavor stuff. You don't really need it. Um... I mean, they just give you the little history of different mind management agents. You know, 1950. Sarah completed training was parachuted into China. His first mission was to neutralize the Chinese Defense Department. You know, little little history stories like that. That are, that are interesting. Here's another one. The Animal Kid. This is, I guess, the kid who could talk to animals. I'm not sure if that one's in the... You know, continue. But all... just And also they have... What's interesting about this is... Um, I don't know if you can see this little blue type up here. They have a little kind of informational stuff in the margins. And this is in the trade too. All this little informational stuff that... It's funny, I have to decide how to read it. When I was first... What, how I would read these was the first time through, as I was reading it, on each page, I'd read the little information. And that kind of really slows the story down. But it's interesting because it gives you little bits of stuff that relate to the story. And then, then I'd read it a second time through a few days later and ignore that stuff and kind of get the full effect of um, reading the story through. So it's like I even got extra out of the monthly issues, which I really... And it, and it also comes on this, um, uh, this sort of tan paper it's printed on. <laughs> In the, once again, in his uh, latest series that he's doing with Scott Collins, Pastaways, they had a six-issue section of the latest mind management series printed in the back of that, except it was on glossy paper. And I gotta say, it looked really different on glossy paper than on this matte yellowish paper. I was just kind of like... and for, I'm not even quite sure why they did this, too. They, they made it look like... they. Original art uh, comic book paper has this blue line stuff where it indicates um, where you trim a comic, where the copy goes, and all that. That's on like original comic art, but it drops out when you print it. They put it all on for printing. Matter of fact, this they, they actually this I don't even think this blue line it would says you know when filling report all essential details must fall within the solid live area and like that's that's comic book production stuff. And, matter of fact, they, I don't even think his original pages have this on it. They had to put this in in Photoshop to make it look like comic book production stuff. I found that a little interesting, um, what they did. But, like, this is mind management, excellent stuff. So it's, one of, it's one of my favorite comics. I'm not sure what else to say about it but that, because um, I really, really enjoy it. it uh, th this, like, this, this, is, this is just the beginning. If, if you like the sort of spy adventure stuff that really makes you go, what the heck is going on here? Oh my goodness, you know, with, with actual stakes where, bam, people live, people die. Um, people with crazy powers come after you, unstoppable assassins, uh, guys who can, uh, and women who can make you do things and you don't even know it. Um, I think that's Maru, too, on that cover. It's just an excellent, excellent story. If you like, like I said, you have to. I enjoy this art style. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea. Like I said, his storytelling abilities are really what makes the art style work. Here's an interesting page. Um, but this is all available in 
trade paperback and hardbacks these days, or you can jump on the series for the last arc, or you probably can find these in some back issue bins. I don't even know how many, how many copies of this they would have sold. But it's definitely a worthwhile story. If you like mysteries, if you like adventure, if you like violence, there's some ultra violence in this on occasion. Um, but it's not really that graphic due to this uh, crazy art style. But overall, like I said, mine, I just put together a list of my top five comics, which ended up being top seven because I'm bad at lists and hate thinking about them and whittling things off. But mine management has been up in my, you know, top five comics since it just about since it came out Pro well, probably a few I th like I said the story as much as I enjoy these six issues it gets even better than this this is kind of just the beginning this is just a little bit of setup this is just a taste of just the wide and varied mind management world that uh, that happens in these I think it's going to end at 36 issues but excellent excellent story do yourself a favor and Get yourself some mind management.